Japan endured a difficult opening match against Malaysia, going down by three goals to nil. Korea fared little better against Pakistan, losing by three goals to one. Much was expected of Shota Yamada against Malaysia, but in truth, he never really got into the game. As for Korea, Lee Sung Gil, the captain, couldn't lead his team past a very good Pakistan side, and there was scant consolation in Kim Jong Jin's fourth quarter goal. In truth, both teams need to improve in a match that really they need to win. It's all set up nicely here in Muscat. Day three of the Men's Hero Asian Champions Trophy 2018. And the first match is Korea against Japan. Korea, the world ranked number 14, up against Japan, the world ranked number 16. And we look uh, to the weather. And it's a nice evening, actually, 29 degrees centigrade. There's uh, uh, quite high humidity, but it doesn't seem quite as oppressive as the first two days. We haven't had any rain yet today. And, uh, well, there's a few hardy folk in to support uh, Korea and Japan in this opening game. So here is the pool table going into day three, and already this looks like a really crunch clash between Korea and Japan. Remember, the top four make the semi-finals, so whoever wins this surely will have the advantage in that race for a top four. Okay, let's get down onto the pitch where Dan Strange caught up, but with both coaches. Coach Shin, you didn't seem very happy with your team after yesterday's performance. What did you say to the boys ahead of today's game with Japan? Uh, yes, uh, yesterday uh, we lost, uh, so I understand uh, because uh, the, our player is uh, not 100% to move in. Uh, for I think, I hopefully, today the bronze move in, we will be expected to uh, win because very important to match this tournament. I want to go to the top four. Today must be win, three point very important. So. Today, all the best. I hope we win. Good luck against Japan. Thank you very much. So, Coach Shin, obviously hoping for a win, but how about the Japanese coach, Siegfried Eichmann? What did he have to say? Siegfried, for Japan, it was a slow start on day one. What points did you make to the team after the first match? Well, I disagree that it was a slow start, but we couldn't uh, convert our chances and well, that's what we worked for on. And uh, I told them that we played well. Of course, score was 0-3. So they did something better than we did. And that was goal scoring. They were very effective. We were not. And that has to change. So we have to be more eager to win. Actually, we always have to play to win. And I missed uh, aggressive uh, play in the D. Looking at today's game, what weaknesses do you see in this Korean uh, lineup? Well, they have a very experienced lineup, but with experience comes age, with age comes uh, lack of speed. So I think that that's their weakness. Good luck today. Thank you. So let's have a look at the head to head. Now this is a head to head in major competitions organized by the International Hockey Federation, including the Asian Champions Trophy. And well, it doesn't make great reading for Japan. Their only victory coming in their last meeting which was in Pool A of the 2018 Asian Games, Japan winning it by three goals to two. They did meet uh, before that in the 2016 Men's Asian Champions Trophy in Kwantan. And that was a 4-3 thriller, which Korea just edged. Well, expectant crowds for Korea. The drums are in, the flags are waving. And uh, Jang Jong Hun will certainly be hoping to have more of an impact on this one than he did in his game against Pakistan yesterday evening. So, 24 hour rest for Korea coming into this one. Japan, well, they had an extra 24 hours. Day three, the hero, Asian Champions Trophy, Muscat 2018, just about to get underway. The two sides led out by the umpires, Jakob Meslik and Khalil Al-Balushi. And I think both sets of players will be well aware of the importance 
of this game in the context of this tournament and progressing to the semi-finals. The top four is what they are aiming for. So the teams slowly making their way out into the center of the pitch and when they are fully assembled, we'll have the national anthems of both countries followed by the handshakes. First, the national anthem of the Republic of Korea. So Japan, the Asian Games champions, taking on Korea. Korea's best finish at an Asian Champions Trophy, fourth in Kwantan in 2016. They lost the semi-final and the bronze medal match in a shootout. Japan, well, their best finish was second on home ground in 2013. Here's the Korean lineup. Kim starts in goal, a back three of Kim, Lee, Lee and Jang midfield trio and a front trio as well the only goal scorer uh, number 23 uh, for Korea uh, Kim Jong Jin but Jang Jong Hyun certainly a player to watch out for where's number 30 leading goal scorer at the Asian Games just gone where he netted 15 goals and he obviously got a superstition he always trains in a white shirt no matter what his side away. As for Japan, there's a changing goal from the first match. Uh, Takano started match one and played in quarters one and three. Well, Yoshikawa starts tonight. He will play one and three, presumably. Shota Yamada, uh, right back. He'll be dangerous from the top of the circle. But uh, number 11, uh, Kenji uh, Kitazato, the most experienced player in the Japan squad with 139 caps has uh, 16 goals to his name uh, since the start of 2014. There are the two umpires on the left from uh, Aman, Khalil Al-Balushi. On the right, uh, a little further away from home, Jakob Meslik of the Czech Republic. And ably assisted in the video umpires box by Nazmi Kamaruddin from Malaysia. So we're almost set to go in this first match on day three, Korea ranked two places higher than Japan in the world rankings. Can they make it count here? So far, the matches have gone the way of the world ranking. And Korea in the blue tops, white sh uh, shorts even, red socks get us underway. Japan in the uh, 
predominantly all black strip. And joining me, Charlie Broom, in the commentary box for this one. It's the three time Olympian for Great Britain, that's Simon Mason. Simon, very good evening to you. And I know it's only day three, but it is a crucial matchup in terms of uh, that fourth position in the table. And indeed, also for the teams, the, both these sides to try and get some positive momentum. They both struggled in the opening games. Korea really failing to get very much on target. Japan, similarly so. And neither side really fired on all cylinders. Korea struggled massively through the midfield against Pakistan, who were dominant. And Japan just didn't seem to get into gear at all in their first game. A number of long balls played by Korea in their opening game, which Pakistan quickly latched onto. Uh, but they were much better Korea in that final quarter. Really caused some Pakistan some problems. And Pakistan were actually thankful. Loud blow of the whistle as the high stick from Kim Hyung Jin comes up. And that's a good trap in the centre of uh, the circle by uh, number 21, Lee Song Hoon. Yes, it's Pakistan. We're actually, in the end, grateful for that third goal by Rizwan Senior because 3-0 uh, to 3-1 wasn't quite so nervy the last five minutes for Pakistan as it might have been had it been 2-0. Yeah, for all the dominance of Pakistan, they could have been five or six clear, but Korea stuck at it. It's that, it's that fourth quarter thing, though, as a player, quite often you go, oh, actually, we played quite well in the end, when, in fact, if you analyse it, it's because the opponents take their foot off the gas, they give you a bit more time and space, and it's a little bit flattering, but whichever way it was... For Korea, it was only the fourth quarter when they got into but it. But isn't it always about belief anyway? It doesn't matter. If you believe that you've played better, then surely that's what it's uh, all about. So, Jakob Mesnik with uh, plenty to say, trying to establish early control. And here's Yamada. And his ball up that right-hand channel, just uh, too strong. Japan will be hoping they can get a few more penalty corners, only getting one in that opening game because they'll want a player such as Yamada to be stepping up and delivering the flicks that he is renowned for. Yeah, both sets of forwards weren't overly busy in their opening encounters, but Japan could be uh, getting a shot on target here, but it just squeezes behind for a long corner despite the uh, open arm protests. Well, real protestations, a couple of horrible tackles in that that you felt could easily have been turned into corners. It certainly felt like Wakori was fouled. Now Japan managed three shots as the ball is rifled in. Goes behind for 16. Japan must have three shots against Malaysia, Korea, two against Pakistan. So uh, plenty of scope for improvement on those stats as there was from that replay. And that's the sort of ball that Korea played consistently against Pakistan. They got nothing out of it. It's that, it's that slap ball in, albeit a nice disguised slap, but A, to nobody, and B, a set defence is going to read that dangerous line really easily. So Japan down that left-hand channel. And Bisley working away is Matsumoto. And the whistle goes for a push. And there's another push right there. Well, I've got to say, in these opening, what, four minutes, there's a degree of physicality that we didn't see from either of these teams in the first game. They certainly, have, it feels like they're going a little bit more shoulder to shoulder. They're stepping out a little bit stronger. The fine line that Jakob Meslik and Mabalushi are going to have to measure. It's also worth pointing out, we mentioned at the top of the show that Japan are the Asian Games champions. They've made a number of changes to that squad that won that competition and they're missing a lot of their goal scorers from the Asian Games. So, yes, they are the Asian Games champions, but with a distinctly different squad. Yeah, and for both of these sides, we've, we've mentioned before, they're not going to the World Cup at the end of the year. So they're into some development phases. They're trying to bring some different players in. Absolutely right. I mentioned it the other day, Charlie, and said that the Koreans are trying to bring in some young players. They're not. They have the oldest average day side here, but it's about the experience. And in those opening two games, that potential squad mix-up showed there was a real lack of understanding and fluidity at times. Oh, actually, the heavily bandaged uh, right quad just above the right knee.
Lovely little exchange of one twos down the that left hand channel ball into the circle. Did it get a foot? No, it didn't. And the Korea managed to clear their lines, but a couple of uh, successes down that left channel for Japan. Jakub Meslik blowing his whistle, suggesting as we see the replay, we can hear the noise. It just didn't fall kindly for Japan at all. It was great move down the left. Let's see what he's got to say. Not happy with uh, the challenges that were coming in. Yeah, that and the reaction. I thought it was quite a nice little bit of skill, a little open one-handed dink to take it into space. Jakub Meslik said it was dangerous blew his whistle immediately and the player reaction was what he didn't like it was the little bit of chat back a give and go from tamura that doesn't come off for japan and now it's an injection of pace from kim seong hyu oh actually just told to mind his uh, Physicality show and come inside from Jang Jong Kyun and he gives it back out that right hand side where Lee Seong Hoon will try and get something going down that right hand side. There's the goal scorer against Pakistan, Kim Hyung Jun. It was a really nice goal, really well worked goal by Korea down the left flank, wasn't it? On the reverse stick and slid in. Yeah, it was a well executed reverse stick hit, dead flat off the leading edge, and he's just come in and just put a stick in the way of it to get that goal. It's pretty much the only shot they had in the or one of one of two shots they had in the entire game. So but in, in this one at the moment, it just feels like there's been some really heavy loud blows from the umpires in these early exchanges. What are we just halfway through this first quarter and it, it it feels like there could easily be a card coming out quite soon. Need to manage that intensity and aggression. Ball missed by the first Korean player and then miss hit by the second, but it actually works out quite nicely as it's paid forward. Looking for Kim Jong Hu. Kim goes for the return ball. Kim Jong Hu, and that's a penalty corner. That's better from Korea, better pace to the game. And they win the first penalty corner of the contest. Really good interchange. And then it's just about keep your stick on the ball and drive through the space. Very little that you can do as a defender. And Ocke just trying to drive through that space and the ball being pushed onto his foot. The pace from Kim Jung Ho. And that pace, obviously at the top of the show, Siegfried Eichmann was talking about the fact that Korea had more age, a bit more experience, but possibly a lack of speed. Well, there's none of that negativity on display so far so Jang Jong Hyun oh, without a ball so Jang Jong Hyun is on the left castle and Yu Seung Ju on the right as we look number two and number 30 and Jang I would imagine is going to be favorite to receive this one doesn't it goes to you and you picks it up and that has come off the number one runner has it that's a really good defensive run absolutely Charlie so Kim Ki Hoon has managed to get a stick off that he's changed his angle it's gone to the right castle he's run straight down it got a stick down by his right shin yeah it's brilliant work from the number one runner Gotta say, going out to that right hand castle though, offensively is a bit more of a risk because your number one runner's straight at the line of the flick and it's a longer injection. Jank fires it in and it's picked up by Hyun, who tries to put it back into the danger zone, but he puts it into the sideboard. The ball from Yang that's come in there is just much more measured, it's onto a stick rather than a hopeful disguised flick in. short arm jab but it's been totally miss hit and that one comes off and falls to Mitani the skip to the skipper for Japan Mitani looks for the return pass still going Mitani he puts it back and just run out of space with Curly and uh, 
Mitani combining well. Two on pars chatting to each other. Yeah, and good chat to make your colleague aware of what your position is going to be. Meslik saying he's having to back away because Korea are throwing their, their centre, their point forward really, really high to stretch play. Aerial ball, uh, looking great for ball. Kim, and that's a good save by Yoshika, Yoshikawa, who uh, wasn't sure where the ball had gone to, but uh, Kim Hyung Jin found himself some space, and now down the other end, here goes Tanaka, spreading it out to that left-hand side, but the ball is behind Kinazato. And, well, Simon, you called it, you thought there'd be an early card, and indeed there is. Osaki Oashi. Yeah, he is, and he's running off as we see the replay of that overhead into the circle. Goalkeeper just gives the requisite space and then big block barrier drives that right leg guard through the ball to get it clear. Rashi with a green card. Here is Junk. Inside the final five minutes of the opening quarter. Lee, Xiong Hoon into the danger area and it's cleared by Yamasaki who gets possession back. Yamasaki. That was a hopeful hit and hit. And Yaneda gives away the. No. Wins the free hit. I'll stick the. Yeah, it wasn't the clearest of signals originally from Al Belushi. See what he was looking here in our headsets, what he's calling for. So, not really particularly positive movement the teams can react to. Kurishita, now to Tamura. Tamura's ball forward, picked up nicely on the reverse take by Matsumoto. But he's lost out. You've got to be careful there. That's a Ugly looking challenge from Matsumoto. Well, these players know what they're doing. When they're running lines out of defence, they set up where they want to run to and they can draw the contact. But if the defender isn't really smart and really alert, you can't get out of the way of that. It creates the collision and you get penalised for it. Real scraking ball from Jang. Free hit's going to be taken by Cho. Show on the reverse stick and at the far post, unable to bring it down at the first time of asking. Was, uh, Kim. Lee Seung Gil. Gets the ball back from Zhang Jong Hyun. Here's Jung once more, trying to apply some pressure. Is Asumoto. Lee. Fortunately, he had the reach because Jang, as he pulled that under his arm, past blind. Just needs to make sure of that. Time possession in the deep part of the pitch. Good turn. Yeah, lovely turn. Ball, 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 and here, chance, snap shot. And it's been put behind for a long corner. It's Cho Sukun who got the ball in. Well, that was a great spin, however. It came off a foot, so it deflected slightly. I'll get through the first line of defence. It's fired in again. That's really good strength from Yamada. Yeah, he just went, that, that, that's A to B defending, that is. You know exactly where you need to get to, and you're just going to run through the opponent to get there. Bullish. Not the ball, not the percentage ball, anyway, from Lee, and he's a little bit lucky, isn't he? Very lucky. You might have then suggesting or appealing that it didn't didn't get the back of his stick. So just pausing to hear what Jakub Meslik is saying to his colleague in our ears, and suggesting that the next bad tackle is likely to be a card. No surprise, we spoke about it three or four minutes ago in terms of the physicality of this so far. runs away from Lee Jung Jun. 
haven't had too many goals in the first quarter of the first what five matches. And again, it's a I wouldn't say it's cagey, a physical opening. It's fit. It's a very physical opening. I agree completely. It's to me, it's the most physical game we've seen so far. There's, there's a reasonable amount of pace to it, but the physicality for me is being created because on counter-attack, the teams are going straight back down the same channel and there's a degree of congestion. The players are close to each other and then they can just step in and make these physical challenges. There's not a lot of whip on transfer. Yamada, high line from Korea. And Japan do well. Oh, I say that. And then uh, Tanaka, Seren Tanaka puts it out of play on that far side. Final 30 seconds. Well, of course, a one. And there's nothing to spit career in Japan. Lee. Oh, lucky. That's a nice little ball. And uh, Huang couldn't quite pick it up. That's a good lead from Huang. Well seen by a skipper. That pick up. It's that lead out on the reverse. You've beaten the defender. Just what? 50 centimetres too far away. Well, that is route one stuff again from Jung Jong Hyun. And uh, that is the quarter time hooter. And nothing to uh, tell you about in terms of goals, but we have had a card. Oh, actually, we're going off under the first quarter. Korea nil, Japan nil. Well, Simon, so, mean, let's have a look at some of the highlights from that opening quarter. And it was Japan started perhaps a little stronger and then Korea came into it towards the end. They did indeed. And it was that left-hand pocket that created the opportunities for Japan right at the beginning of the game. They felt that that was a tackle going into it. Like a feeling that he'd been fouled two or three times in the course of that. Then there's a great overhead ball. Superb vision takedown. Goalkeeper off his line quickly. Had to control the movement or he'd have given away the penalty corner. For infringing on the five meter space but the great decision late on is big and drives the right foot through the ball Kim unable to just get what would have been a cheeky little lob we did have a penalty corner in there but uh, that came to nothing but as you can see possession in opponents half at 57 to 43 in fact that is the overall possession stat as well so career dominating but can't find the goal so what do you think coach Shin has been saying to his team in this break? Well, for me, they've, they've got a reasonable amount of pace, but there's just no width to the game. When they turn the ball over, there's no lateral. If you split the pitch into three, left, middle and right, whichever channel you're in on turnover, you want to move across one channel. That's then going to give the space. Now changing goal, as I thought. Uh, Yasuki Takano comes on for quarter two. Siegfried Eichmann giving uh, plenty of pitch time to both his goalkeepers. And Korea will get quarter two underway. Looking to start quarter two as they finish quarter one. On the front foot, trying to find this early breakthrough. And some lovely skill in the centre of the park. And still going all the way into the circle. And Cho gets nothing for his efforts. It looked like it looked like an absolute foul as he ran into the circle. I've got to say, we'll see it again in a minute, I'm sure. But Japan all the way down the other end, one direct pass, and they created the counter. They tried to play counter attack against Malaysia in the first half of the first game, and they really struggled to get anything out of it at all. But delightful skill going in there, stick on ball. There's, to me, there's no contact on the ball, but the player's gone down. We can't really see the contact in the replay, whether there was any, so I can understand why Jakub Meslik didn't penalise it. And Mr Shin, I think, has uh, just told Mr Meslik that perhaps he felt there might have been a penalty corner. Well, perhaps he slipped. Well, maybe he slipped, but also the players, no, the players didn't ask for it, did they? If there's, that's why we have video referrals. If the player felt he'd actually there was some contact behind him, you take it upstairs and you ask, but in real time, it it looked wrong. I couldn't tell you why. It certainly looked like it was a foul there somewhere. Picked up by Kim Young Jin, but he's lost out to Tachiai. And 
Yamada. Throws the aerial ball. That's, that's an <laughs> That's a that is an interesting ball. And just there, Jakob Mezek has just told Coach Shin that he's playing with fire. So Coach Shin obviously can't let it go. And the technical delegate from the bench has wandered across as well. Quick early ball. They could be in here. A chance maybe in that left hand sh on the left hand channel for uh, Kim Young Jin. But it uh, doesn't quite fall for him. And now it's uh, Kim. Kyojin, who tries to make something happen, but here comes a counter-attack through Tanaka. Saren Tanaka still going around the outside. That's a brilliant take-up high by Wakuri. Wakuri is ball back into the middle. And Ochiai can't get the shot away, but it is a penalty corner. Well, no surprise in the build-up. There's at least two or three contacts into the circle. This was a lovely take down and round. In the middle of this, there, players pushing that away, and then... The ball's gone slightly away from Okai's stick, but as he comes across, pulls it across his body, comes back in, then there's contact. He does that, then there's contact mm, I think slightly he's lost on control. his stick. I, I, I think yeah. he lose control. I think Japan might be a little lucky. Look like Korean defenders hit each other's sticks as well. But we have had the benefit of replay. So Yamada. Yamada, the left hand castle, and it will be Shota Yamada. Shota Yamada goes low to the keeper's right, and it's into the back of the net. And Japan have the lead, perhaps somewhat against the run of play. Shota Yamada didn't get into the game against Malaysia, but he's into the game here. Out and stopped dead on that left castle. He just rips it around his feet. The goalkeeper's not unsighted. That's relatively poor goalkeeping, because that's a flick pretty much straight down the middle but as a quicker execution, he drags it through and releases it fractionally early. And I think the goalkeeper's caught out by that. Yamada. Yeah, Shota Yamada with his first goal of the tournament. But as you say something, the keeper had offset massively to his, his left. It actually went just straight down the middle of the goal. Yeah, and his body weight was all wrong. The balance was completely off. Anticipating maybe the number one runner was running off a different side of the goal, which is weird to have the guy running from that side. But... Yeah, certainly not the best corner defence we've seen. Weird because... Well, normally you'd have your number one runner running off the goalkeeper's left post because then it's a forehand uh, take from the top of the D. But that one looked like the first runner, the most aggressive runner, was running off the right post, which made the angle of the shot different. So anyway, Jang drops it out. To Lee Seong Hoon. Through Lee Seong Gil. Japan stick and Japan can break again. And leading high up the park is Azawa as they can find it into the middle of the park to pick up Oashi. Here is uh, Yaneda. Yaneda trying to find and release. Ozawa. Ozawa has given possession back, and here is Cho. Cho. Well, you look how Cho's cut across field during the course of that passage of play to create the space for himself. Japan going up and down. Here's the goal. Look at the number one runner. He has. He's run off the goalkeeper's right. That's why he's offset. But you just can't do that as a goalkeeper. You're relying on the ball hitting your number one runner's feet to protect that channel. And it's also completely the wrong angle for the runner to get any sort of open stick on it. You are just putting your body down the line. It doesn't make sense on about five different levels. The ball goes behind. spins and plays it back towards the halfway line everybody apart from the Korean goalkeeper now in the Japan 23 as the ball comes across and Yamada reaches and gets possession just to take the ball away but a free hit to Korea and Jang will take it Jang Outside 
The 23 to start with so the ball can go directly in. Yang just moved it a tiny little bit. There's the angles. And that's, sorry, Joe, that's what he needs to do if he's doing that. If he's, if he's just firing it in dead straight. But we've got a video referral. Korea calling it. That's me. Yeah, come in. Korea is asking for a stick tackle here inside of the D. Can you check it, please? All right, I'll check for you. So it looked like it might have been away and from the play. Please check if the ball was related as well. Thank you. Yeah, sure. that's what. That's the important question: is the ball related? Because if this comes in, if there's a stick check and the ball's nowhere there, you can argue that it's contest and therefore it's penalty corner. That absolutely left of shot, spot on. You can see the gold stick lifts the other stick out of the way as the ball's being fired in. This has got penalty corner, or if stopping the player getting the ball it's a deliberate foul that you could suggest even penalty stroke if you look at what's been given in other games so as this ball comes in the two players just coming into shot now look at the stick that that lifts the attacker's stick out the way the umpire perceives that that's a deliberate and stops okay, an opportunity yeah, cool. yes go ahead I have a decision for you okay the stick was pulled by the Japanese player as a penalty con Thank you. Right. Yep, good spot. Well done, Simon. As me, Cameron didn't agree, and Korea have a chance to draw level. A second penalty corner for them. That wasn't the most subtle <laughs> attempt at pulling a stick out of the way, I have to say. So again, Jiang Jong-hyun waits, and instead of number two, it's number eight, Lee Seung-gil. Japan just being hurried along. They're taking their time. The clock is stopped. There needs to be some sort of pace to the game. The swap at the top, and Jiang from the center it takes uh, the foot of the number one runner who is uh, number 11, Kitazato. That's a really late change of striker. Jang trying to exploit the goalkeeper's left-hand side. Goalkeeper did offset, if I remember correctly, in that first game that Japan played. This time. Jung stays on that right-hand one. Then it slipped to the captain. They look for the deflection. Oh, and just squirms away from Lee jung Jun on the uh, Japan right post as we look out from the keeper. The injector almost getting on the end of it. Well, that's a good routine. That's knowing what the defence is against you. They slipped that across to create the space. This bit was just fractionally slow. Good attempt from the defender. Actually missed it. He's opened the blade up too much. And the second phase not anticipated by Lee Yun Yun. Both players, both teams think he was there for a hit. Yeah. Almost taken by Cho. Skills on that right hand side by Tamura. Really good awareness by Tamura. He's carried that outside his left foot as the two defenders have closed down. As they come to him, he's just rolled it through into the space. He can't get there himself, but great awareness of where the second defender's coming from. A little heavy from Yanida. it out it's the press coming from Japan and Korea are gonna have to work it out in congestion but to tell you what he's got some pace as Jung Jong Kyun takes it up over the halfway line doesn't get anything and the ball forward missed by the first player who was uh, Kim Hyung Jin but picked up by the second player who was uh, Kim Ki Hoon 
happen. Superb speed of counter-attack by both teams. The, the raw pace from Jang down that left-hand side, absolutely electric. No one down this left-hand side for Korea, and as a result, there's no outlet ball for Hyun, and he's lost possession. And it's, so you have a go, we'll have a go, sort of hockey at the moment. Oh dear, and here's an opportunity, and that's a good save. The follow-up is saved again from Kim, and the wild swing and a miss from the defender. He gets in at the second attempt, but a real chance for Japan. Oh, two good bits of goalkeeping in the end. Kim Ye-yong, first and second phase. And the wild swing, actually, if we, if we see it, if the replay lasts that long, you've got to say, as the swing comes in, that's a good bit of goalkeeping, decent block. Fortunately, absolutely nobody in the way. Matsumoto stepping in with the attempt. One of the third shot, didn't he, Matsumoto? He had the first two saved. First time ball across was from Kirishita, but it's been picked up and taken out of harm's way by Lee Seung Hoon. On the reverse stick, loose ball. Oh, almost a perfect ball into Yamasaki. Oh, what's that? That's just the Good turnover. turn from Yamasaki. Yamasaki driving to the top of the circle. Yamasaki shot. He takes a big deflection off the defender's stick and then batted away by Kim Jai Hyun. Oh, that turn is brilliant. It was given away awfully. Gets tries to get sure he needed to swing the first moment. It's fractionally earlier. Possibly concerned that he thought he wasn't in the circle. But you know what? At that range, take the shot. Let the umpire make the decision whether you're over the line or not. Get the ball away. Sandana's ball. Into traffic. So Kurishita gets the free hit. He was standing stock still. Defender moving towards him. That's why it's a Japan ball. Good little skill from Tanaka, but in the end, Korea crowd him out. Japan certainly happy to press high and go and hunt the ball down. Korea struggling to get out of those bottom corners unless they go to the air, and in which time they're throwing the ball away. And that's good experience from Lee Xiong Hoon, just not rushing things, allowing Jang to take the sideline ball so they can push up but Jang's taken it to himself and he's played himself and his team back into pressure he's still not getting rid of the ball and uh, just goes out of play and some real uncertainty it's Japanese ball but Yang by taking that first touch and getting the ball in play absolutely opened up all sorts of trouble for himself there's no need to touch it if you're not going to pass it just get your feet around it and move and get your pass and get your eyes up decide what you're going to do Kirishita Lovely, well, well taken actually, the ball from Ochiai. Getting his eyes up, he's got time. And he's going to use that pace again, and then just offload it under the shoulders of Hyun. Hyun comes back in field, tries to thread it through to uh, Yu. Very congested down the middle of the park for Korea. It really feels like you could tear up the two wing spaces at the moment. Nobody's using them. Compare it to the success some of the other teams have had in this tournament, going round the baseline, exploiting space outside the defence. Oh, he commits to the dive at the far post, does you, and as a result, would have had an open shot, but he would criticise him if he didn't. Gamble on his nose at the far post. He does that and the deflects back into where he would have been standing. Absolutely. You make a choice and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. But... Hey! Oh, that's a pretty wild swing from Jang. And uh, Japan, oh, look to counter-attack, but off the foot of Wakuri. No, Hoshi absolutely right, trying to drive through that space. If we look now, however, at the circle entries, that Korea have had as they've gone forward. It's the middle and the right they've tried to use down the left-hand side, absolutely nothing at all. If they just get a bit of width through midfield. For me, it's not the final phase, it's how they run with the ball through midfield. Now, perhaps here's a chance down the left-hand flank. This is going very central again, and in fact, it's gonna go down the right. They could be in here. Korea shot comes in, that's off the post. Oh, desperately close. What a shot that is. 
It's a lovely layoff to the right hand side. Gets his body round really well. Flashes across the goalie. Keeper as he's sh shuffling left. We see the weight change. Tries to come back. Hasn't got it covered. They're getting closer. Picano beating all ends up. Final two minutes or so of the first half. Here comes an attack down the left hand side. Kim. Jong Jin. It was actually down the left hand side. They got their success against Pakistan. It was indeed. But Jang, when they've got they've gone down there, but Jang's just not getting high enough up the pitch to offer a, a higher transfer. That ball out of the bottom pocket was a 40-yard pass. He needs to commit a little more to supporting his midfield. Ball across. He's topped, and in fact, on the follow-through, the player's been uh, hit, but Japan are going to try and counter here. This is uh, oh, great Hoshi. Great skill from Hoshi. Stopped on the sixpence. Matsumoto still going. Matsumoto into the circle and Jang Jong Hyun picks it up. Here is Kirishita. Top of the D, in it comes the penalty spot. Goalie out. Good save. Good save. Very good save from Takano. He's been lively, hasn't he? Takano. Now, career off the post. They've had a good chance saved by the keeper. Sideline ball. Play Simon with the save. Yeah, just it's, it's the reading, it's the understanding that's really good. Holding ground, staying nice and balanced, and then attacking the ball as hard as possible. How hard is it as a keeper coming in doing sort of parts of games? The honest answer is I never played quarters, so it's yes. really difficult to tell. Half and half's not too bad because you can then warm up at half time and you can get a decent amount of exposure to just some shots. We'll have to explore that one a little later because the half-time hooter has just sounded and Japan have broken the deadlock in that second quarter. They got the opening goal through that man, Shota Yamada from the top of the uh, circle of penalty corner, but Korea have hit the post and they've had a really good opportunity saved by the Japan keeper. Uh, the half-time score reads Korea nil, Japan won. Have a look at some of the
Welcome back to Muscat in Oman, where in the opening match on day three of the uh, 2018 Asian uh, Champions Trophy, it's Korea nil, Japan one. Shota Yamada, the difference between the two sides, a penalty corner three minutes in to the second quarter. Well, the Korean fans will certainly be hoping they can be waving those flags a little bit more in the second half. But let's have a look at some of the highlights from that opening uh, 30 minutes. And uh, that was the first penalty corner for Korea. Well, charged down really, really well with an offset goalkeeper, changing the defensive lines. Korea again, then down that right-hand side with a great overhead opportunity. Charged down in the end, really strong and aggressive goalkeeping to get the ball away. Falling kindly in the end, but Yoshikawa attacking that and driving through it, denying Kim the opportunity for what I felt might have been a cheeky little lob. So down the other end, second quarter, penalty corner, and uh, it's a decent strike from Yamada, but the replay will show the keeper well offset, and it's gone straight down the middle of the goal. Well, keeper offsetting because the runner was off the right-hand side, but just ineffective in the end. Then it falls kindly for Japan. They're hunting. They get the shot away. It's a good double save in the end. Goalkeeper blocking it up. A wild swing, meaning it doesn't fall for Japan. But in the end, Kim Yehyon making two decent saves just to keep the scoreline at one. Yeah, Matsumoto with uh, those two chances. And then down the other end, this is an absolutely glorious opportunity for Korea. But, uh, Decent save, and before that, actually, they'd hit the post as well. So, Korea with the two really good opportunities in the uh, closing minutes of the first half, but they couldn't uh, find a way through to goal. But uh, there are the stats equal, pretty equal number of shots, just uh, quite a few more circle entries for Korea. They've had more possession than their opponents are, but they'll be disappointed to have converted 0 from 3 from their penalty corners. Okay, let's get down onto the park. I think we can hear from Siegfried Eichmann, the Japan coach. Siegfried Eichmann, a half where you find yourself as 1-0 up, but it has been uh, a tough half for Japan. How happy with the team are you so far? Well, I'm happy with the team, and I am not. I disagree with you that it was a tough half. We had a lot of possibilities and chances, and again, the young guys, they don't score uh, where they can easily do, but that's what the price we pay for learning and uh, but if you if I look at the game we do well there are some minor details which we don't perform well but that's because they are very eager and they want to attack and they forget their defensive jobs and my job is to to teach them what to do and in that I have to be without compromises so that's what I give them they get learning, they learn very valuable lessons and they, you can only learn them in a match like this. So that's it. Thank you. Well, the thoughts there is Siegfried Eichmann. And, uh, well, Japan will be pretty happy with what happened, but their keepers both have been playing well. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of those days. That was Yoshikawa's save, in fact, from the first quarter, number 30. Takano wears 28. Was indeed, but both goalkeepers doing really well to anticipate and read play. They're not moving too early. This ball only up. Then there's the explosive movement to charge it down and get the body in the right place to deny it. So for both goalkeepers, holding their space, holding their balance, and then being aggressive, not going too early and over committing, good understanding of what's happening in front of them. So players are ready, the clock ticking down and this second half will soon be underway. Crib got to get on the score sheet if they can. Whistle is blown and Japan attacking the goal to our left hand side and leading by a goal to nil. Get us underway. Well, Siegfried Eichmann obviously slightly different opinion to certainly us Charlie we were talking in the break in the stats it certainly felt like Korea were coming back into it they were creating opportunity it was by no means an easy half uh, I, would for agree, Japan. I would agree with the question it has been a tough it's been a tough half for both teams yeah. it's been physical but, uh, 
maybe it was a misunderstanding of the question, tough in, as in the sense that it's been a, it's a hard game yeah. as opposed to hard going for Japan. Well, it's certainly been physical, hasn't it? As we say, it's been the most physical game we've seen so far this competition. And it, well, we'll see if it continues or whether a little bit more space will open up. We feel that that's a great turn. On the reverse stick and the deflection. It's been given as a 16. And Jakob Mezik agreeing. Let's have another look. Yeah, the turn before that reverse stick crashed in. Good defensive running in the end from Tamura. There's Cho with the touch. Tamura. Oh, that's a very loose pass. Misunderstanding, it's Awashi who played it out to Zendana. And again, the phys physicality, the physicality starting again. Rather winning the free hit. Throws the big aerial ball, and oh, it's just evaded everybody. Clever high movement for Japan, trying to create the space behind Jang. Jang missing it, but oh. fortunately, that's not the percentage ball. That's pretty high risk, isn't it? Just regard the smallest of touches from Kitazato, and that was in. Oh, that's been penalised for Steve. That's not five. Yeah, that'll be a card, surely. Yeah, Kim did not back off. Felt hard done by that he'd been blown for the stick, stick obstruction in the first instance. And I thought that was hard done by because he was just trying to carry the ball. But even so, you still have to have the personal discipline to back away. Turning back in field is Oashi. Yamada. Zendana, Tamura, Tamura plays it infield, looks for the return ball from Mitani, gets it. Tamura, little ball infield, oh, didn't quite find Yamasaki. Didn't, but it was exactly the right choice, wasn't it? You could see, and it's that interchange that we haven't seen from Japan. They've created that one-two on the left flank, then they've got a high lead with a reverse run. So as the defender anticipates a pass down one foot, it comes down the other. Mitani to Arashi. Arashi. Oh, pace on that crossfield ball as they go down that right hand flank. Kitazato comes in field. Kitazato wins the free hit off Lee Xiong Hoon. Kitazato behind by the Korean captain Lee. Well, the touch is needed to be if it gone across the face of goalkeeper. Japan committing men to that back post. Tanaka into the circle. Good save. Down to his right hand side, Kim. He really anticipated that shot from Yamasaki. He needed to be that alert and to anticipate that much, otherwise it's 2-0. Well, had to and had to read the shot. There must have been something in the movement in order for him to go down that low that fast but getting a right hand extension there's a reach from Lee Jung Jun and he tries to release Cho Cho and in the middle is Lee Seung Gil Cho on the reverse stick and it's going to be a Japan ball on the sideline Oh, great pace from Cho down that side of the pitch, then chops through it, nothing wrong with that. It's away from all the players, so not dangerous to anyone. Two, four compliments. slip and it's a three on three situation here for Korea can they make it count that's a brilliant covering tackle from Japan absolutely stunning the slip completely undoes the defense but what a brilliant bit of running look at the commitment to run and then stepping in to make that tackle Masaki Ohashi 
absolute brave as you like to get in there to deny the opportunity for Korea. Jacob Mezik's patience has worn thin. Oh, Belushi was going to give him one more chance, but Jacob Mezik has decided enough is enough. Well, it's just that it just if you allow it to go, it just gets chirpy. It's just constant little snipey comments. Sooner or later, an umpire's patience runs out. Just a hopeful ball smashed across the circle. It's a nice little tuck right to left in the field. Oh, that's uh, wow. Chung Jong Hyun, who's being spoken to now. What on earth has he either said or done for Meslik to clearly say, if you want, I can give you a straight red card? Tanaka spins away. They're trying to keep their discipline here. Yeah. Because it's not like they're not in the game. They've had some great chances, career. Well, they're, they're right there. Absolutely right there. This game is nowhere near away from them at all. But to, to get into a situation where you're only a goal down, and that was a little bit fortuitous from that Japanese corner for Japan, just, just crazy. to stay high they're confident in their physical conditioning that they can stay and run those lines it's really really tough physically to run a high press well it's been won back by Matsumoto and here they come to Wakuri Wakuri he needs an out ball he needs someone getting up behind him so he can get it away it's just too deep that had to happen probably two seconds earlier Zadarnik needed to just step up into that hole into the pocket Oh, lovely return ball, ball back into the centre, can they get the shot away, good save, it's still there for Japan on the reverse stick, and it's a penalty corner. And the ball was put in by Tanaka. I think there's just a little, it's not a deliberate follow through, but the stick has come through on the flick as it's been ripped in close. In it comes, a lovely little ball, the fortuitous touch gives the defender. That gets the flick away, goalkeeper high and up and on it. And now real commitment as the drag comes through, the stick follow through, just catches. Well, used lying on the floor, so it's... Oh, it's not, it's, it's, there's no issue with it other than it's just being the contact point. The whistle had already gone, it's not there, that's the ball in, that's already a corner. Goalkeeper's behind it, so it's not a penalty stroke. But then there, that's the stick through, unfortunately, as Tanaka pulls through. Corner is obvious, but now watch Tanaka comes through, attempt, and then just catches on the follow through. You picking that hit up. Japan feel that the replays have been on the screen already though, can they ask? No, that they shouldn't be able to. Because it's show the replay on the screen? Yeah, they show four replays okay. on the screen. Sorry, Mr. Tanaka. I can't take it because they showed the replay on the TV. So so you can't take it, right? It's too late. Thank you. It was far too late. That's good communication from all the officials there. I think all he could have been asking for was that flick that he had when it hit the player. The goalkeeper was already down on the floor behind it anyway. I felt he would have wasted it. But, he, but, even, but even if they hadn't shown on the screen, he, he's asked way too oh, late. Far too late. Far too late. What is, it? is it? Is it within a reasonable passage of play or is it eight seconds? 
much, much too late. Enough, enough, enough. One. Before. Because the player was injured. He was got umpire. Oh, he can't ask for it for starters. But it's just a, we cannot do this. Because the player was injured, he didn't see the referral. This is unbelievable. The referral this is signal. Really? Uh, we are screwed up here. I, right? I, un I understand that however this concern for the player if it then goes if it then goes up on the big screen everybody can see it anyway so you're then just reconfirming it to be honest when we saw it charlie i'd have i wouldn't have gone for referral because the goalkeeper was clearly behind the defender they'd have wasted it anyway that can that could be the only thing they're looking for is that when it hits the player's body going towards goal anyway it's a corner <laughs> you might not be complaining if this goes in let's wait and see it goes to the right hand castle it's been run down and it's another penalty corner as Zendana takes it up. Oh, Lee Hsiung Koon doesn't get the stick on this. Just his feet it takes him off his feet in the end. It wasn't a clean trap on that right-hand castle anyway. It's bounced away horribly. Readjustment for the attacker is so difficult. Stick to foot. Takes him off his feet. Zendana again waits on that right-hand castle. Sendana once more, he gets hold of it, it's back into the middle. Oh, that's a really good follow-up clearance from Jang Jong-hyun. We talked about his scoring prowess at one end. Well, he's been alert enough to prevent one at the defensive end as the ball whistles across the circle. Well, out to the right-hand castle, stopped round the number one runner makes it really difficult for the goalkeeper who's offset then some teamwork between postman and keeper and the clearance from yang as you say charlie vital uh, good strength from Matsumoto. here we see Here's the ball that comes into the goalkeeper to start with. Nothing wrong with that. That then possibly is what's contested then here. As it hits the player on the line from Tanaka, suggesting he felt it was a body on the line on the way to goal. He's dropped the knee, hasn't he? He has dropped the knee. He's put himself in the way, so you could suggest deliberately harsh. But the goalkeeper was definitely behind him, so it wasn't an open net. Stalks the technical area in front of the Japan dugout. Well, and sometimes the process isn't going to be perfect. If there's a player down and the replays go onto the big screen and it's all just a little bit awry, for me it's. it's I don't. I just don't understand why you get absolutely irate about that sort of thing when it wasn't a clear decision. That's a great pick up. Now, Korea. They haven't had an opportunity for quite a while, but uh, trying to disrupt it is Tamura. Tamura. And it's upended by Lee Jung Jun. Well, it's the 50 50 stepping in a little bit hard. Lee Jung Jun. Yeah, it looked a bit like he was annoyed. Yeah, it did. He'd lost the ball, and it was—it just felt like he's leading in for with hip and shoulder. And Meslik is trying to counsel his slightly less experienced colleague into how he's making his decisions a little bit, making sure he's strong enough. Lovely little one-two. Yeah, Yamada looking for the ball back from Kazawa.
Charlie. Thought Tamora had absolutely left his teammate in all sorts of trouble as he dropped that slow, slow ball under his arm. Russell blows as Kim Xiong comes in with the tackle. Tamora, good touch as he runs then onto it. Here is uh, Yamasaki. Oh. Yamasaki gets a little fortunate. No, uh, certainly players with black shirts free in front of him. He tries it to find one on the uh, right-hand post. And the clearance is made. He was looking for Kitazato. More one-twos down the left-hand side for Japan. And Korea survived that moment. But Japan full of running here. And they could be in again. That's a really good tackle as the spin came in for Matsumoto and bringing it away is Lee Seung Hoon. Lee Seung Hoon runs in or finds Matani. And free hit to Korea and taken quickly but Ozawa gets his stick on it. And here goes Yamasaki. It's just as the players, the running pace has increased, but they're holding onto the ball a fraction of a second too long. Oh, that's a good pick up on the reverse stick by Kim. Kim, it's possessed nicely. And the ball is played forward and put off the side of the park. Lee Seung Hoon. Lee Seung Hoon needed a call behind him as he stepped into that through ball. It was almost a beautiful ball in, cut out by Yang Jong Hyun. Final two minutes of what's been a fiery third quarter. Korea trying to find a way back into this one. Here goes Kim Jong Yu. He's just run up straight into the back of Zendana. No real attempt to make the ball. Look at the commitment to the forward running there. Exceptional coming through all the way from Hoshi on the overlap. Well, that's, I was going to say that's never going to get through, but I thought the deflection would in the end would make it through. Oh, really good step up from Zendana. It's end to end. Yeah, it's so entertaining, isn't it? Entertaining game without the finished product, the end product at the moment. Japan trying to breakthrough once again but this time it's Kim Hyung Jin who disrupts the Japan attack Jiang trying to be a little bit too cute down that left touch line gives possession back and Mada's ball forward is picked up and here go Korea ball out to the right hand side this is Lee Seung Hoon Lee trying to run around the outside of Kirishita Kirishita Stops him, but he's still going. There's a ball in the circle. Here's a chance, perhaps. Shot comes in, deflection in front of the keeper. And it's a really good save by Yoshikawa because he was going down and had to get the left hand up. Deflected by the defender in front of him in the end. Takes a touch, then he has to get up. Plays it down. Now going across. Is that, no, is that in or is outside? That in? Just outside. He was just outside. I think it was the angle we were looking at as the ball bounced up. It looked like it was inside the circuit as he hit it. Long aerial ball. You, that's, uh, Yoshikawa. Well, that was the end of the quarter. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, definitely it was outside. outside. Yeah. yeah. Good lead from the keeper. Oh, wow. Well, we can all catch our breath in these two minutes. At the end of the third quarter, lots of huffing and puffing, lots of uh, needle, but no addition to the scoreline. Korea nil, Japan won. Well, let's have a look at the highlights, Simon, and there seemed to be an awful lot going on in that 15 minutes. It didn't there, the ball fell kindly for Japan. Great save by Kim. Yeah, Hyun in the Korean goal drops down really quickly when he reads the ball whipped around the feet there drops in a good block Really well done good opportunity for Japan and 
for a period, it felt like it was all the black shirts. Ball hit in hard, deep defending in the end. Only one blue shirt with three blacks around him. So here are the stats. Just trying to listen into the umpire's conversation in between here just to see what's uh, going on on their side of things. But look, career, plenty of circle entries. Not as many shots as Japan. Japan are being very uh, clinical when they get into the circle. Uh, Korea need to improve that if they can. So, Siegfried Eichmann talking with the, his team. That you get a feeling they need another goal, Simon. Yeah, the, the Koreans are being given opportunities. I think, for me, Japan are shading it in terms of their technical play and their build-up. They're getting more players around the ball. It's less individual. But for, for Korea, they, they, are, they are dangerous and they've really got to find a little bit more space and both sides have got to retain their shape and resist the temptation to just go direct up and down the middle of the pitch. So here we go. Korea caught a little napping here. They've been slow out the blocks and Japan could take them. And going to ground is Kitazato. The only time I've ever seen that was in the World Cup in 2014 when Belgium were desperately slow in the women's match against Korea, in fact. And Korea almost scored, but they didn't. Just to add to that, Great Britain versus Germany, I think, in London. Or the, the, the pre-Olympic tournament in London, they came out late and got punished. Germany scored a goal from the restart. Great Britain well, started with six, I think, the men. It was, was pre-Olympics, though. Could have been the semi-final there. <laughs> Could he's a different team, but yeah, result. Yeah. Is it 9-0? Just to put that into context, Holland 9, nine Great Britain 9-2. Two. Nine, two. Nine, two. Nine, two. Very nice jacket you were wearing that day, Simon. Kitazata trying to win the penalty corner. They've got the referral if they want. Jakob Meslik can't. Uh, see, so can't blow. Prior to that game, the worst British uh, men's Olympic hockey defeat was 8 1 against Pakistan, and I was playing. Prior to that, so 9 2, I'll take that. Wipes the slate clean. You're out the record books. Uh. Uh. Japan with a little bit of gamesmanship there, taking the. Taking the, the restart from a long way up, which really needed to be penalised and pushed back a lot earlier. J Korea making the point by standing on the dotted line, five metres away from where the ball should have been. Here is Mitani. Mitani. Ball forward, nice ball as well to uh, Tamura. Tamura. Good tackle back from Jang. Did really well to get himself in a clean tackling position it was horrible physically he was trying to reach round his opponent He'll stick in the right place nice ball out to this right hand side now can uh, Cho make something of it Cho into the circle coming across is Mitani to make the tackle but always relatively simple defensively now Lee Lee with uh, time to get his head up and um, penalty corner coming for the foot, and here is a chance for Korea. Well, really important as it comes is up off a Japanese stick into the body of a Matani. Absolutely no contest. Lee suggesting he would have gone to video anyway. But Korea so far with nothing. No return from their three penalty corners. I suggest they might go to the nearer castle. Not had a huge amount of success from the right-hand attacking castle. So, can Korea find a way back into this game here? <laughs> Yang Ji Han is on the right-hand castle. It's gone to him. Jack flicks off the foot of the number one runner, who is Kenji Kitazato. 
but they've had so little success out to the right hand side okay that one's actually down the middle of the goal but the number one runner can get a direct line onto it suggest they might go to yang on the short stop next time just because it opens the angles up if you look at the acceleration the number one it's getting right on top now they shift to the left hand side and it goes to jang once more yang with a flick and that has been put behind i think it's the post player or no. is it the keeper who's got the touch? Might have been body. I think it's relatively central as a flick. It is indeed. It's a good save, though. Left glove. Yes, Extension yeah. out. It's gone upstairs. Yeah, yeah. The Korean plays a foot. Sida, can you check me for me, please? So I'm looking for a foot of defender. Foot, foot. All right. Defender foot, now. Thank you. OK. Who's, is this an umpire referral no, or I a team referral? Is, I think this is a team referral from Korea. Let's have a look. This to me looks absolutely like the goalkeeper who saves it. It might then touch the defender, in which case it's just a real ward because it's come forwards. Right. That's a goal he That's saved. Great save. Got the player defender's nowhere near it. Goalkeeper union. Great left, great left hand save. He's offset. It's come across. Nowhere near. It's behind the postman. He doesn't even see it. Overturned. That's probably one of the cleanest ones we'll have all week. Long drag, clean execution, nothing, nothing there. no impact, no impact, no impact. Cameraman, that's gone already, unfortunately, but the goalkeeper down to his left, good extension. The postman, look at the post, he doesn't even know where the ball is. Comes inside the postman, inside the number one runner. It's not even at the post player, that's left hand. You can see the left hand move when the ball impacts out past the post. Khalil? Yeah, that's it. There's no reason to change your decision, and Korea lose their pro. All right, done. Okay, long corner, yeah. Yep, long corner. Right decision. So, Korea lose their referral with 12 minutes remaining in the match. Oh, I didn't. And doesn't quite fall for uh, Cho Sukun. Japan, um, this right hand side, trying to find that second goal as the ball comes in. It's cleared. Lee. Oh, really good high pressing yet again. Japan happy to commit numbers. And I think it's why Korea struggle at times because when they have attacked or counter attacked, it doesn't feel like their back five are fit enough to get up the pitch far enough. But looking down from here, you've got the three or four Korean attackers and then you've got their defenders and there's nobody in a blue shirt in the midfield. Yeah, so it just it just feels like they haven't been able to commit those extra men and consequently when they get it, the ball carrier finds himself faced with two if not three of the Japanese players in black shirts around him. Lee being asked to take it further out to the left hand side. Yang down that right hand channel and it's been picked up nicely by Hyun. Hyun driving down the goal line, pulls it back, the ball across the face of goal and there's no one in a blue shirt there and Azawa will get it out of harm's way. That's players committing to the near post, it was great pace down that front side by Hyun. You can see a card, here we see the turn on the replay, it's a great turn, defensively poor, getting outdone by the ball through but then actually getting back far enough in the end, Kirishita to get the touch that was vital and then just a swing, a wild swing. Jong and Yu both going to it, the near post. And in the meantime, number 32, Kim Ki-hoon has picked up a card. I think it was, hold on a second. I think it's, let's listen in. Jakob Mesdek just walking over to, or running over to the technical bench. So because he already has a green card, he picks up the yellow card. So Korea's task just a little bit harder now.
So was that the incident of the car? No, it was the incident down the right-hand side. He basically used his body to try and break up the attack. He was cynically trying to stop Japan breaking down that right-hand side. Here's Shota Yamada into the circle. Chance here for Japan. Oh, nice little ball inside. What a beautiful goal that is. Really well taken. Matsumoto finishes it off. But a real lovely delay in the build-up that set him up for the goal. And it all came from a beautiful ball in from Shota Yamada. Shota Yamada here cuts in field, gets his eyes up, just punches it forward. This delay here shapes for the goalkeeper. What a beautiful under-the-arm ball. The, the, the understanding commits the goalkeeper to his near post. It's a great pick out from underneath his feet in the end anyway. But this pass absolutely makes it. Genius ball from Wakuri to end up giving it on a plate in the end to Matsumoto. He had to have two touches at it, but super understanding and finish. Well, the yellow card compounded by a goal, and it's 2-0 with nine minutes remaining. stages the latter stage of the game against Pakistan Korea fan next a couple of gears they're not doing it here Japan pulls it back here's a chance for a third maybe but the falling Suguru Hoshi couldn't find the required touch I've got to say I think in the build-up here Lee very lucky not to get penalized for a hand in the back on that drive through from Wakuri. Yeah, just moments ago, Korea had that counter attack down the right hand side. So much space across the face of goal, but all of the attackers going for the same pass. Japan showing just a little bit more awareness in the circle. to nil and it's been dispossessed and forward will drive Jong Jong trying to set up Kim Jong Hu but he is beaten to the ball by Oashi whose ball across the field sets Japan going down this right hand side and back it comes to Tamura it's like mini games within mini games it's four against four at one end two against two in the middle and four against four at the other end well, and that is physically grueling if you're in those long distance runs and it, I've got to say looking down from our commentary position it's Korea who look like physically are struggling more than Japan obviously the scoreline doesn't help in your head you feel tired if you're those two goals down well, Japan are back in action tomorrow against India and India are playing up next against Pakistan so they're going to have a high intensity game as well so that, that should prove a leveller come uh, tomorrow they off for Korea, then they play Malaysia, Oman, India, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's a tough schedule for them as Japan go looking for a third. Oh, it was beautifully done by Matsumoto. And then he couldn't quite find the ball across. No, it's just the ball was popping up. He was just trying to swing at it. That's the steal. It's tired. There's a lovely little bit of movement. Falls kindly and swinging a miss. It's a long corner for Korea. Lee will take it. Lee advances, plays it towards the circle, lifted off the leg of Oashi. Free hit, needs to go five before it goes into the circle. It's gone the requisite five. Lovely little pull back by Lee. And Korea don't have, Korea don't have a referral. Korea don't have a referral. Just descending in here. No, the 
absolutely losing it here, Korea. So now down to nine players. Lee paying the price for his teammates' disappointment. Well, he needs to sit down quickly as well, because as far as I'm aware, that clock doesn't start until his backside hits that chair. So and You're right, it doesn't. So he won't be back on until 40 seconds before the end. Now Japan are going to run after everything here. There is a prime example as Kitazato chops that down and Kim's almost caught out at his near post. He needed to have his angles absolutely right. Yes, the cross was from outside the circle, but if he got that wrong, there was absolute commitment even now to that back post from Yamasaki. So this is what happened before. Well, that looks that's a double yellow then, so that's a yep. yellow because he'd already had a green for the chat in the first half, hadn't he? For his team's chat in the first half, he'd already yep. been green carded, so double up, straight yellow. Well, anyway, he's not going to be taking too much yeah. part, more, uh, too much more part. I can't say what I'm saying, he's not going to take any, any more Anyone minutes. On this? Thank you no, very there much. You go. <laughs> And it's, it's unfortunate the captain's 50 metres away, but there is a discipline that's well, inherent in the, the form. There is, it's gone. Uh, they lost it. And we heard the earlier call from, uh, from Meslik on Yang about something to do with a potential red. Then players have just got frustrated. The shot comes in. Nothing touched. But coming up in what, just over 45 minutes time. Uh, match six, Pakistan take on India. Well, that's a... Lucky touch to give Korea possession. Again, though, it's that ball that's drilled in. It's that slider slap. So as a player comes in and plays across it, so it just pushes it out to the right-hand side. Difficult to read, but from a straight line, really tough to get anything on it in the circle. Korea now are back three. The midfield haven't really come back. It's the first lead back. Everybody else in their opponent, the Japanese half. No. Back in their own, you said it's like four, four, six basically the formation at the moment. Here is Lee Jung Jun, and uh, back to ten. Our uh, career. More circle entries. Same number of shots. They just haven't been as clinical as their opponents here. Lee drops it out to the left, ball fired in. Was that soft of Japan foot or stick? But either way, it's a long corner. Must have been off the stick. Little touch. And oh no, that's a good leave from Tamura. And you're absolutely right in terms of that clinical nature. So Korea have got in the circle 17 times and only produced five attempts on target, whereas Japan 14 would have made seven, and they've made the most of it. But you can you can remember the runs into the circle from Korea. There's just players running the same lines. Lifted off the upper thigh of Jang. Oops. He does well to regain his footing. Lee Jung Jun tries to play the ball inside, trying to pick out Lee Seong Hoon. Free hit to Arashi, uh, gives away the free hit. Yang, foot of Arashi. Deep defence from Japan has been impressive as well. It feels like they've got sticks on everything. There's not been those loose touches in the circle and feet that have given away penalty corners. It feels like they've defended well deep, but they've also defended well high in the front press. Aggressive stepping out. Last 90 seconds, and Japan are going to look for a third here, and it's a three-on-two situation. Out to this left-hand side. Here is... Uh, Matsumoto into the circle he goes and he can't make anything happen on that occasion. 
Well, the, 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 the idea was right, the shape was right, but it was the one defender had also read the most dangerous pass. There needed to be a bit more lateral movement before the delivery. Kamada, nice ball up that right-hand side, and then and picked off, or no, there is Tamura. Tamura with the ball inside, still going. Really good touch from Jang Jong-hyun. Reverse it, trying to clear. It's Tamura. That'll be a free out to Korea. Spin down the left-hand side, individual, but look, the number of black shirts that are flooding back into defence. Korea tired, they can't get more than four or five in support in total. I'll leave the captain is back on after his yellow card, so they have got the full 11. But Japan are going to win this match, and it's going to be their first win at the Asian Champions Trophy since they beat Oman 4-0 on the 7th of November 2013. So it's been a long time coming for Japan, but it's a win that is probably going to make them finish in the top four and qualify them for the semi-final. There is the final hooter, and Japan have taken the spoils here against Korea, up the cheeks from Siegfried Eichmann. Real disappointment for Korea. But credit to Japan, both their keepers, uh, Takano in quarters two and four, and uh, Yoshikawa in quarters one and three, uh, did really well. And uh, there's a little bit of after the Korean players not uh, happy and just showing their displeasure. But take nothing away from Japan. That's an excellent performance from them. Final score, Korea nil, Japan two. So, Simon, a good performance from Japan, and they've got a lot of R&R &R to do before their game against India tomorrow evening. Let's have a look at some of the highlights. Oh, Korea down that right-hand side. They created that overlap. Goalkeeper done very, very well to anticipate the overhead and create that big barrier as he came out to the top. Yoshikawa absolutely driving through the ball with that right leg. Japan then took the lead with a penalty corner pretty much down the middle an odd defensive routine running your number one runner from the goalkeeper's right all the angles looked wrong goalkeeper off setting the ball straight down the middle not quite sure why they would run that defense but Siegfried Eichmann high five claiming it Korea then coming back in opportunities ball in gets a touch back into the penalty spot but again good Japanese goalkeeping stepping forwards and Takano doing his job off his line like a rocket. Shin casting a frustrated figure. Link goalkeeper's again that called was into it. Save, wasn't it. Yeah, it was indeed. Good movement from Kim to come forward and drop low. Read the shot really early. Could easily have gone above him, but gets down. Understands the ball's just behind the Japanese player's stick. This then was a fantastic movement. The ball under the arm created absolutely everything to find the space the goal being finished but the pass that sets it up absolutely delightful yes yeah, both passes wasn't it were curry's final pass but uh, yamada's initial pass but here are the stats equal number of shots more circle entries for career more attacking play for career but they just couldn't make a breakthrough so work to be done on that penalty corner routine yet to find a breakthrough yet to find a way to make it uh, work on those set plays right let's get down to the post-match presentation with Dan Strange welcome to the match presentation of match number five of the Hero Asian Champions Trophy 2018 between Japan and Korea we would like to thank our sponsors Hero Motor Court we also welcome the dignitaries to the presentation party, Mr. Zuhair Mohammed Al Ajmi, a member of the Asia Hockey Federation Executive Board. The first award of the night is the Hero Man of the Match, and the winner from Japan, Shota Yamada. He will collect a check for 150 US dollars from the sponsors, Hero Motorcall. Congratulations to Shota Yamada. 
Yeah, excellent performance from Shota Yamada. He was strong in defense. He uh, scored the first goal and he was the first pass in the second goal. A good all-round performance from him. Yeah, and he had to cope with the physicality of the game. We said right from the outset it was a real contest. He had to drive through some channels, break down some Korean attacks, and then finish the only opportunity that he got given. It's not the best flick he'll ever execute, but a goal's a goal. Yeah, I think a well played to Shota Yamada. But next up, it's uh, a rather tasty encounter. Pakistan take on India. What a way to finish off day three of this Hero Asian Champions Trophy 2018. So in a must win game between Korea and Japan, it was Japan that took the spoils. They have downed Korea by two goals to nil and have the box seat for a top four finish here in Muscat.